Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So for today, we will continue our discussion on capital budgeting. And as far as I'm remember, we are now on part 3 of this topic. So again, part 3 is all about your non-discounted techniques. So I decided na hatiin into two parts ang techniques in capital budgeting so that later on we can properly or easily identify kung ang technique ba ay discounted or non-discounted. And I will explain later on kailan ba siya discounted at non-discounted. Okay, but for now, sir, ano ba ang purpose ng techniques na pag-uusapan natin? Actually, itong mga techniques na pag-uusapan natin later on will be used by management in deciding whether to accept or to reject a capital investment proposal. But, but a kind reminder only na in order for you to master this topic, kailangan or it is a must na, da na dapat master natin yung discussion natin on part 2 and part 2 is all about your elements of capital budgeting kasi mamaya mapapansin mo kasi tung techniques na to more on formula based lang to eh so mapapansin mo mamaya sa mga formulas na gagamitin natin most of them gumagamit nung tatlong elements na pinag-usapan natin nung umpisa okay so sige wag na natin patagalin let us start with your techniques in capital budgeting so, to properly classify your technique, hinati natin siya by using a concept map. And according to our concept map, may mga technique o may technique na gumagamit ng net income for evaluation at may technique na gumagamit ng cash flows. Kaya nga sabi ko nga last time sa part 2 sa pag-compute ng operating cash flow after tax, di ba meron tayong dalawang way? on how to compute your cash flow after tax. My suggestion is dapat alam nyo siya pareho. Kasi yung alternative one or yung first way of solving it involves a computation also of your incremental net income. Yung incremental net income na yan, yung tinutukoy nung technique na gumagamit ng net income or profits. Tapos yung cash flow na tinutukoy dito, this pertains to your operating cash flow after tax. Okay, at pagdating sa technique na gumagamit ng net income, isa lang naman yon. Nandiyan ang accounting rate of return or also known as ARR. And kung ano ang ARR, we will discuss that later on. Okay, ang ginagawa lang muna natin dito, kinaklasify lang muna natin yung technique para mas mabilis mo siyang maalala. Okay, next. Pagdating naman sa technique na gumagamit ng cash flow, hahatiin pa natin siya sa dalawa. Kasi may technique na gumagamit ng cash flow pero hindi kinoconsider or it ignores time value of money. At meron namang technique na gumagamit ng cash flow as well as it considers time value of money. Pagdating sa technique na nag ignore ng time value of money, nandyan ang payback period and then your bailout period. And again, kung ano man ang payback at bailout, edi discuss natin later on. Okay, at itong tatlong to, these are considered as, as your non-discounted techniques. Kasi silang tatlo ay mga technique na nag ignore ng time value of money. Kasi ang ARR, nag ignore na siya ng time value of money, hindi pa cash flow ang ginagamit niya for evaluation purposes. Ang ginagamit again ng ARR would be profits or net income. Okay, so definitely, yung techniques na gumagamit ng cash flow at nagkukonsider ng time value of money, yan ang pag-uusapan natin on the next video. Yun yung tinutukoy nating discounted techniques. So para malaman natin kung discounted o non-discounted, it is being determined whether gumagamit o kinukonsider ba niya ang time value of money o hindi. Kasi kung hindi, non-discounted. Kung gumagamit, discounted. Okay, so let us start our discussion on accounting rate of return. Okay, accounting rate or accounting rate of return is the traditional technique of measuring profitability by relating the investment account to its incremental net income. Actually, accounting rate of return is not a concept introduced by capital budgeting. Bakit hindi siya inintroduce ng capital budgeting? Technically speaking kasi, capital budgeting, sabi ko nga last time, uses cash flow numbers or it uses cash basis of accounting. Ang ARR kasi, ang ginagamit niya would be the traditional basis or your accrual basis of accounting. So, ibig sabihin, ang ARR ay hindi inintroduce ng CapBud. It was adapted by capital budgeting. 
adapted from where sir it was adapted from your traditional accounting kasi ang ARR hindi naman bago sa paningin natin to eh ang ARR katumbas lang din niya ng return on asset sa ka return on investment ng traditional accounting measures for example di ba ang return on asset kung naalala niyo last time that is net income over asset ang return on investment is net income over investment mamaya mapapansin mo sa formula hawig lang din doon ang accounting rate of return kaya nga ang ibang tawag sa accounting rate of return would be BRR BRR stands for book rate of return okay so now let us discuss what are the advantages and disadvantages of using accounting rate of return Number one advantage would be ARR emphasizes profitability rather than liquidity. Take note, mapapansin mo mamaya, may mga technique na nagpo-focus sa liquidity, may technique na nagpo-focus sa profitability. Ano bang pinagkaiba nun, sir? Pag ang focus kasi ng technique is profitability, more on ang concern niya, gano kalaki ang kikitain ko sa investment. Pag liquidity kasi ang focus nung, nung, nung technique, ang focus niya would be gaano katagal babalik yung nilabas kong pera. So magkaiba sila ng focus. Sa ARR, since profitability ang concern niya, mas malaki, mas maganda. Pag liquidity ang concern ng technique, ang mas okay sa kanya, yung mas mabilis. Kung, kailan ma o kung sino yung mas mabilis na babalik yung investment sa akin, much better if I am focusing on the liquidity side. Pero ang ARR, again, ang focus niya is profitability. Next, ARR considers income over the entire life of the project. Mapapansin mo kasi later on may mga teknik na hindi ginagamit o hindi kinoconsider lahat ng information doon sa project. Okay, and I will talk about that later on. Ang ARR, kinoconsider niya lahat from day zero until matapos ang life ng project. Okay, and last, availabil availability of the data from the accounting records. This is the main advantage of ARR kasi sabi ko nga, ARR uses accrual basis of accounting. And generally, ang accounting books natin or ang, ang, ang ating accounting records is based on accrual basis. So, wala tayong magiging problema regarding availability of the data to be used in computing ARR. And syempre, may disadvantages din ang paggamit ng ARR. Number one, sabi ko nga kanina, since non-discounted technique siya, it ignores time value of money. Pangalawa, with the computation of income and book value based on historical cost, account, historical cost accounting data, the effect of inflation is ignored. And that is common sense. Since accrual basis ang ginagamit mo, accrual basis uses the historical cost principle or the cost principle. And accordingly, under this principle, you are measuring the item according to its cost. You are ignoring changes in purchasing power or you are ignoring the effect of inflation. Okay, so that is the main disadvantage of using ARR Okay, now the question sir The real question sir Kasi theoretical side yan eh The real question sir he is How do I compute ARR? Accounting rate of return is computed as Net income or incremental net income Divided by your net investment Di ba kung papasinin mo Di ba hawig na hawig siya Ng formula ng ROA sa ka ROI Diba return on asset is net income over asset? Ang return on investment is net income over investment. So kung papansinin mo, ang ARR, hawig na hawig lang din doon. Pero ang investment kasi, ang word na investment kasi na ginagamit sa capital budgeting is not simply investment. We are using the word net investment. Kaya kung baga, sinabstitute lang natin yung denominator. We use the word net investment rather than investment or asset account. So, kumbaga, based from that, I will repeat, ARR is a concept adapted by capital budgeting from traditional accounting. Okay? So, yun nga lang, net investment could be original or average investment kasi. Pag original investment, yan na yun, as is. Okay, nakikita mong formula sa taas. Pero kapag based on average investment, ang ARR ang computation ng average investment is net investment plus salvage value divided by 2. Okay, so I'll repeat. Kapag original, based on original investment, kung ano kita mo formula sa taas, yan na yun. Pero pag based on average investment, i-consider natin ang salvage value and then we will divide it by 2. 
Sir, paano kung silent ang problem? Hindi sinabi ng problem na based on original or based on average. Pag silent tayo, we will follow the based on average assumption. Bakit? Kasi generally kasi, incremental net income or simple net income is already an average amount. It, yes, we all know ang net income, kinukumpute yan at the end of the year. Pero come to think of it, lahat ng data na ginamit mo sa pag-compute ng net income are all data coming from the start of the year until the end of the year. So, kumbaga, it is an information all through used for uh, it is an amount used from information all throughout the year samantalang if you will not use the average investment assumption pag kapag ang ginamit mo lang ay net investment net investment it's is not an average amount kasi isang basis lang naman naglabas ka ng pera gamit yung amount na yan and that is at time zero so isang basis lang siya so basically they are not comparable and accordingly sabi nga ng FS analysis kung naalala mo last time kapag ganyan ang senaryo nagko-compare ka ng income statement sa balance sheet account ang ina-average natin balance sheet account at ang balance sheet account natin would be the net investment account kaya ina-average natin siya pero ang computation ng average investment natin is not beginning plus ending ang ginagamit natin is net investment plus salvage value divided by 2 okay so again I'll repeat pag silent we will use the average investment assumption okay so let us apply what we have discussed on ARR ay hindi pa pala so bago natin i-apply ang ARR pag-usapan na rin natin yung susunod na technique which is payback period payback period is defined as the length of time required for a project's cumulative cash flow to equal its net investment sir ano ibig sabihin nun pag tinagalog natin ang payback period it is simply it, it simply represents ilang oras o ilang taon ang lilipas bago maibalik yung nilabas kong pera so ibig sabihin based from that definition we can say that the main advantage of payback period is that payback give information about the project's liquidity or in other words payback period focuses on liquidity rather than profitability so kung titignan mo baliktad sila ng focus ng ARR ang ARR ang focus profit ang ang payback ang focus is liquidity. So, ibig sabihin, kapapansin mo to sa mga theoretical question, pag ang focus mo ay profitability, you are focusing on the return on investment. Pag liquidity ang iyong focus, ang focus mo ay return of investment. Okay? So, magkaiba yung return on, saka return off. Okay, next. Another advantage of payback period, mapapansin mo mamaya, sobrang daling computein ng payback period. Ang formula ng payback period or yung way of computing payback is related sa kanyang definition lang. So kung naintindihan mo yung definition ng payback period, wala tayong magiging problema later on on how to solve payback period. And then pangatlo, payback period is a good surrogate for risk. A quick payback period indicates a less risky project and that is common sense. Okay, so ibig sabihin, kumbaga, payback period is usually used as an initial screening technique. Ah, kasi naalala mo last time yung word na screening, di ba mamimili ka sino yung mga project na i-accept sa kay re -reject. So kumbaga, ang isang project kasi dumadaan sa series of screening. At ang, ma ang magandang technique na ginagamit for initial screening would be payback period. Kasi definitely, kung maikli o mabilis ang payback period, much better. Konti lang ang lilipas na panahon bago maibalik yung nilabas kong pera. So, mababa lang yung risk na matatalo ako sa investment na to. Okay? Siyempre, ang payback meron ding disadvantage. Number one disadvantage, again, it ignores time value of money. Just like accounting rate of return. Pangalawa, after reaching the payback period, subsequent cash flows are ignored. Ito ang pinagkaiba ng payback sa ARR. Sa, pay, sa ARR kasi, we are using data from day zero until matapos yung life ng project. Sa payback period, hindi. Ang concern lang ng payback period is day zero, kasi yun yung time na nalaglabas ka ng pera, until lang, o ang gagamitin yung susunod na information is until ma-reach lang yung payback period. For example, ang life ng project is 10 years. Kung ang payback period ng project ay 4 years, lahat ng information from 5th year until matapos yung life ng project, ignored sa payback period yon. Kasi nga ang concern lang ng payback period, maibalik yung nilabas ko. 
So kapag naibalis na kapag ibinalis, kapag ibinalik na yung nilabas ko, definitely wala na akong pakialam sa mga susunod na cash flow because I'm concerned on the liquidity side, not on the profitability side. Kasi kung profitability ang concern mo, kailangan makita mo lahat ng data from day zero until matapos to check kung talagang kumita yung investment o hindi. Okay, so again, kaya ganun ang senaryo, magkaiba ng focus ang ARR saka payback period. Okay, next pangatlo, it does not consider the salvage value of the project itong pangatlong na to ang nagpaiba sa payback, sa ka bailout period and I will explain later on ano ang, ano ang papel ano ang role ng salvage value sa pag compute ng bailout period pero mamaya na yon for now tandaan mo lang ang payback, ang ginagamit mo lang na information sa payback, cash flow after tax lang, you are not using salvage value okay So ngayon sir, how do I compute payback period? Okay, ang computation ng payback period kasi nakadepende kung ang cash flow after tax ay even or ang cash flow after tax ay uneven. Kapag ang cash flow after tax ay even, wala kang magiging problema sa payback kasi we will use a formula. Kumbaga, kapag cash if the cash flows are even gagamit tayo it is based on a formula to compute payback period and the formula would be net investment divided by cash flow after tax okay, kasi nga ina-assume natin ang cash flows pare-pareho taon-taon okay but if the cash flows are uneven i am sorry to say but you need to compute payback period manually Sir, paano yung manual computation? Ang manual computation ng payback period ay may example tayo later on. Okay, but for now, tandaan mo, kapag ang cash flows ay even, hindi siya manual computation, gagamit ka na, kung parang automated, gagamit ka lang ng formula, you can compute payback. But if the cash flows are uneven, you will compute payback period manually, pero wag kang mag-alala, hindi siya mahirap. You will just go back to the original definition of payback period. Okay, so let us apply what we have discussed on our sample exercise number one. Uh, actually, dalawa lang naman ang sample exercise natin for this for this video lecture. Sample exercise number one is focused on ARR and payback, while sample exercise number two is focused on payback as well as bailout period. Okay, so let us read a sample exercise number one. Bain Bus Terminal is planning to install vending machines with a cost of 300,000. So take note, paki-screenshot na as much as possible para hindi na tayo pabalik-balik later on. It is estimated that these vending machines will generate annual sales of 20,000 cups with a price of 10 pesos per cup. Cash variable costs are 4 pesos per cup while cash fixed costs are expected to be 50,000 per year. So stop muna tayo doon. I will explain some of its part some of its parts. So basically, sa sample exercise number 1, kung papansinin mo, nag-invest tayo sa vending machine. At ang purpose ng investment natin is not to reduce costs. Our purpose is to increase operating income or cash operating income or basically increase the net cash inflow. Kaya nga kung titignan mo, para mapataas ang cash inflow ng kumpanya, kailangan mo magbenta. At itong vending machine, ini-estimate niya na magbibenta siya ng 20,000 cups taon-taon. Na ang presyo ay 10 pesos at may variable cost na 4 pesos. And as well as, it will incur a cash fix cost amounting to 50,000 per year. So mamaya, sa pag-compute ng cash flow after tax, ang starting point ng computation natin is not cost savings. Ang gagamitin natin is cash operating income. Remember last time sa part 2, sabi ko nga, ang cash flow after tax, ang starting point could be cash OI or cost savings. Depende sa purpose mo kung bakit ka nag-invest. If ang purpose mo is to reduce cost, cost savings ang starting point mo. Kung ang purpose mo is to increase cash inflows, definitely ang starting point mo is cash OI. So, hindi pwede magsabay yun sa isang problem. Okay, anyways, the vending machine's estimated economic life would be 5 years with a salvage value of 50,000 and depreciated using the straight line method. Bain is subject to a 35% income tax rate. So requirements, letter A, determine the payback period 
and letter B determine the ARR based on original investment and ARR based on average investment. So kung papansinin mo, di ba? Pansinin mo. Ang formula ng payback period is net investment divided by cash flow after tax. Di ba ang net investment sa cash flow after tax ay elements of capital budgeting. Ang ARR ang numerator net income. Pero kung maalala mo last time, bago ka pumunta ng cash flow after tax, pwede mong padaanin sa net income. So somehow, lahat ng elements o lahat ng data na kakailanganin mo to answer A to C will be coming from our previous discussion and that would be the elements of capital budgeting. Kaya nga diba sabi ko last time sa last video natin, crucial yung topic na yun. Pag nagkamali ka doon, do not expect na tatama ka pa sa technique. Kasi pag mali ang element, automatic mali na ang technique. Okay, so let us answer, let us analyze. So ibig sabihin, before we answer A to C, kailangan muna natin kompletuhin yung elements. Okay, umpisahan natin sa net investment. Walang problema ang net investment natin dito. Hindi sir, mahaba yung competition yan last time eh. Yes, mahaba siya. Sabi natin, di ba, tatlong section ang element, ang, 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 ang computation ng net investment. Pero sabi natin, kompleto yung tatlong section kung ang decision ay replacement. Pansinin mo sa exercise natin, meron ba pinalitang old asset? Obviously, wala. Dahil walang pinalitang old asset, then common sense, this is an acquisition decision, walang old asset section. So, ang laman lang ay new asset sa working capital lang at a maximum. Eh, kung pabasahin mo na maigi yung exercise, wala ka namang nabasang information regarding working capital. So, malamang, ang laman lang ng net investment mo, new asset. At ang new asset natin, nagkakahalaga ng 300,000. Wala namang sinabing installation, testing, and etc. So, automatic, ang net investment natin, 300,000. Kaya, huwag kang masyadong kinakabahan sa net investment. Sabi ko nga last time, humahaba lang ang computation niyan, depende kung replacement o acquisition. Pag replacement, mahaba talaga ang computation ng net investment. Pero kung acquisition decision niyan, walang ka-challenge-challenge. No-brainer. Kayang-kaya natin ang net investment. Okay, next. So, we are done with the first element. Since ito ay non-discounted technique, hindi natin kakailanganin ang discount rate. Kasi ang discount rate, ang, 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 ang gagamitin natin to compute present value factor if the technique is a discounted technique. But since pareho yung payback sa ARR non-discounted, kung may binigay man na discount rate, we will ignore the discount rate. Okay, anyways, let me go back to our exercise. So, we are done with the net investment. Let us proceed to cash flow after tax. Sabi ko nga, ang starting point ng cash flow after tax would be cash OI. Paano ba kinukumpit ang cash OI? Sabi ko last time, para lang din siyang CVP computation. Di ba ang computation ng OI sa CVP is CM minus fixed cost. Pero ang gagamitin mong fixed cost ay cash fixed cost. Kasi if you will use the word fixed cost, ang assumption may kasamang depreciation yon Because depreciation is a non-cash expense, hindi siya kasama sa pag-compute ng cash operating income. Okay, so ang starting point natin would be your sales. Ang sales natin is 20,000 cups times the selling price of 10, that would be 200,000. Variable cost is 20,000 cups times 4 pesos, 80,000. Therefore, the contribution margin is 120. Pwede natin shortcutin ang 120 sa CVP last time. So, sa CVP, to compute or para ma-shortcut yung 120, it is simply 20,000 cups times 6. Okay, because 6 pesos is your unit contribution margin. Okay, minus cash fix cost. Remember, on our given information, yung 50,000, sinabi ng problem, cash operating fix cost. So, dahil cash fix cost siya, wala tayong problema. 50,000. So, therefore, ang cash OI natin ay 70,000. Pero, hindi pa yan yung cash flow after tax. Cash OI pa lang yan. Babawasan natin ang incremental depreciation. Ito yung sinasabi kong warning last time. Mapapansin mo kasi sa mga exercises, sa multiple choice problem, most of the time, ang decision, acquisition. Dahil acquisition, ang, malab, ang madalas na nilalagay mong data dyan, yung depreciation ng new asset. Pero again, huwag kakalimutan, ang gagamitin na word ay incremental. So siguro, pa nagko-compute ka, lagyan mo na lang palagi ng salitang incremental. Para palagi mo naalala na we need to compare the depreciation expense of the new and the depreciation expense of the old asset. Okay? 
eh, pero kasi madalas masasanay ka na new asset lang ang ilalagay mo kasi most of the time, I'll repeat the decision is acquisition rather than replacement anyways, our income before tax is 20, so babawasan natin ang tax na 35% so that is 7,000 therefore, the incremental net income is 13,000 pero ang kailangan natin would be the cash flow after tax so that would that would, and to compute that we need to add back incremental depreciation of 50,000 so the cash flow after tax is 63,000 pero syempre para masarap na naman ang tulog natin mamaya compute natin yung 63,000 using the alternative computation e di ba yung alternative computation natin ang starting point nun would be cash operating income after tax so that is literally iya after tax mo yung cash OI na 70,000 so that is 70,000 times 65% and then tax shield on incremental depreciation ang incremental depreciation natin is 50,000 times the tax rate of 35 so ang tax shield na binibigay ng depreciation expense is 17,500 and wow, magic ang ating cash flow after tax is also 63,000 so, syempre medyo kinabahan ka na 45,500 may butal tapos kanina walang butal anyways, so again ang aking advice, kailangan parehong alam mo yung ways on how to compute the cash flow after tax, remember gagamit tayo ng ARR at sa ARR ang focus niya is net income at hindi cash flow after tax anyways so let us apply, isa-isahin natin let us start with payback period ang payback period dahil ito ay even cash flow after tax pag sinabing even, pare-pareho taon-taon that is just simply net investment na 300,000 divided by 63, that is 4.76 years meaning 4.76 years ang lilipas sa panahon bago maibalik yung 300,000 next simple rate of return pag nakita mo yun sa problem solving ha, pag ang ginamit na word ay simple rate of return that is uh, that is ARR based on original investment and definitely ang gagamitin natin ay net income at hindi cash flow after tax kung naalala mo kanina ang, ang ating incremental net income is 13,000 divided by the net investment of 300,000 that is 4.33 percent then letter C, average rate of return, that would be net income pa rin, pero ang gagamitin na natin ay average investment. Diba ang average investment is net investment plus salvage value divided by 2. Remember, ang ating net investment is 300. May salvage value yung asset na 50,000. So 350 divided by 2, ayun, yun yung naging resulta ng computation, 175,000. So, 13,000 divided by 175, our average rate of return or your ARR based on average investment is 7.43%. So, this would be the answers for sample exercise number 1. Oh, walang ka-challenge-challenge, sir. Sobrang dali. Kung titinan mo, lahat lang pala ay nakasalalay sa tamang computation ng element because wrong computation of the element will result to the wrong computation of the technique okay so next actually last topic na tayo pag-usapan natin ang bailout period okay sir ano bang special sa bailout period remember uh, you need to master also bailout period kasi bailout period is one of the topics na or one of the techniques ng capital budgeting na madalas hindi pinapansin kaya pag lumabas sa board exam ayun nga nga madalas ang estudyante kasi hindi alam ang concept ng bailout period eh. pero wala kang poproblemahin sa bailout madali lang din ang computation ng bailout period kasi bailout period is just a variation of payback period Bakit siya naging variation ng payback? So basically, ang concern din ng bailout period is also the liquidity of the project, the liquidity of the investment, not profitability. Ang pinagkaiba lang ng bailout sa, sa typical o traditional na payback period, we will also include the estimated salvage value at the end of each year nung life nung project kung titinan mo, binold ko na siya so ibig sabihin, kung naalala mo kanina sa payback period, ang ginagamit lang nating information, cash flow after tax lang, sa bailout period we will also use cash flow after tax but we will also include the estimated salvage value at the end of each year Kaya nga, I am sorry to say, walang formula for bailout period. 
Sir, bakit walang formula sa bailout period, sir? Kumbaga, ang computation ng bailout period, palagi pong manual. Okay, paano palaging manual, sir? Kasi kung isipin mo, yung cash flow after tax, pwedeng even o uneven yan eh. Magkakaproblema tayo sa salvage value. Mas madalas kasi ang salvage value ng first year, pagdating ng second year, bumababa. Kasi syempre, habang tumatagal yung paggamit mo sa asset, bumababa ang kanyang value. Kaya naman, kahit na yung cash flow after tax even, since sinasama natin sa computation ng salvage value, at ang salvage value ay palaging o madalas uneven, then definitely wala talaga tayong pwedeng i-come up na formula to compute payout period. Pero wag kang mag-alala. Meron akong template dito to help you, at least help you o para mapagaan ang computation natin ng bailout period. Okay, so again, bailout period can be computed manually. So kung titina natin, kung manual computation tayo, mag-start tayo sa computation ng bailout for the first year. So for the first year information, ang unang papasok na amount dyan, salvage value ng current year. Na ano yung salvage value ng taon na yon? Ia-add mo yung cash flow after tax at the current year. So, syempre, ito total mo. Kapag yung total na yan, hindi pa nag-equal sa net investment. Take note, kapag sinabing manual computation ng payback o manual computation ng bailout, you will go back to the original definition of payback. Na ang goal ng payback at bailout, maibalik yung nilabas mong pera at time zero. At ano yung nilabas mong pera at time zero? That is your net investment. So, ibig sabihin, kung tinotal mo, let us say, ang total niya 100,000. Ang net investment mo, 150. Ibig sabihin, kung hindi umabot sa 150,000, it means, hindi isang taon ang lilipas na oras bago maibalik yung investment. So, lagpas na isang taon ang ating hinahanap. So, puproceed ka ngayon ng second year. For second year onward, so pag sinabi second year onward, for second year, third year, fourth year, hanggang matapos, ang computation na ng bailout period would be number one, salvage value ng taon na yon. Sir, bakit ganon? Bakit sinasama pa rin yung salvage value at the end of the year? Kaya siya tinawag na bailout. Di ba pag sinabi mong bail, parang sa Tagalog, piyansa. Di ba kapag nagpapiyansa ka na nakakulong, syempre, ilalabas mo yung taong nakakulong. So, pagdating sa investment or sa asset, pag sinabi kasi natin bail, definitely, it, it is somehow, hindi naman synonymous na talaga na synonymous, pero pwede natin i-relate yung salitang bail sa pagdi-dispose. Kaya, taon-taon, sinasama ang salvage value kasi ina-assume, kapag binenta ko ba siya ngayong taon, maibabalik pa yung nilabas kong investment. Okay, yun yung concept ng bailout period eh. Kasama sa pag-compute ng bailout period, ang salvage value kasi ina-assume na binibenta siya taon-taon. Kaya nga kanina, kung sa first year, 100,000 yung total niyan, at ang, ang, at ang binubuno mong amount ay 150, definitely, ina-assume na hindi natin nabenta ng year 1 yung investment. So, pupunta tayo ng year 2. Bati sa year 2, ito total mo ulit yung amount. Kapag natotal mo na, pag hindi pa rin umabot, ina-assume ay hindi nabenta ng year 2. Lilipat tayo ng year 3 hanggang ma maabot yung bailout period. Uh, so, ibig sabihin, ina-assume na binibenta siya taon-taon. Kaya nga, ang isasama natin, yung salvage value lang nung second year. Yung salvage value ng first year, ignored na yon Kasi ang assumption, the mere fact na umabot ka ng second year, iniisip ng bailout period, hindi siya nabenta ng first year. So, ignored na yung salvage value ng first, ng first year. Ipa-plus natin yung cash flow after tax ng mga nakaraang taon. So, kung papansin mo, syempre sa first year, wala yung item na yan kasi malamang, common sense, first year pa lang. Pero pag second year na, meron ng mga previous cash flow after tax. At ang pinakahuli, yung cash flow after tax ng current year, ito total ulit natin kapag kulang, lilipat ka ng third year hanggang mabuo mo yung bailout period. Pero ang rule, ang concept lang ng bailout period, saka payback period, kailangan maibalik yung nilabas kong pera at time zero. Okay? So, let us apply itong payback period para ma-appreciate mo, para ma-appreciate mo yung aking template. Let us apply that to our sample exercise number two. A company purchased a new machine on January 1 of this year for 180,000. With an estimated useful life of 5 years and salvage value of 10,000. The machine will be depreciated using straight line method. The machine is expected to produce the following cash, flow, cash flows from operations net of income tax. Take note yung nakikita mo amount na 
70, 80,000, 70,000, and 60,000, lahat po yan ay cash flow after tax na. It means, hindi mo na kailangan mag-compute ng cash flow after tax. Pagdating naman sa net investment, hindi mo na siya kailangan computein. Kasi ang net investment natin is automatically 180,000. Bakit 180,000 sir? Kasi wala namang old asset eh. New asset section lang ang meron. At wala rin pong working capital section. At sa new asset section, wala ka namang nabasa ulit na directly attributable cost. Meaning the net investment is automatically 180,000. Okay, so ibig sabihin, ang binubuno nating amount is 180,000. The salvage value of the new machine is 20,000 in year 1 and year 2, and 15,000 on year 3 and year, and year 4. Sir, kulang, walang binigay na year 5, eh, di ba? 5 years yung life niya. Siyempre, yung salvage value at year 5, yung binigay na sa first sentence, na sabi niya, ang salvage value is 10,000. Di ba ang assumption, pag narinig mo yung salitang salvage value, yan yung amount na pwede mo ibenta ang asset at the end of its life. So, yung 10,000 corresponds to the value of the asset at year 5. Pero yung year 1 saka year 4, binigay sa huling paragraph. So, requirement number 1, determine the payback period, and number 2, determine the bailout period. Okay, let us start first with payback period. Remember, ang computation ng payback period pwede by using a formula or manual. Gagamit ka ng formula if the cash flow after tax are even. Kung titignan mo, ang ating cash flow after tax from year 1 to year 5 are uneven. Hindi pare-pareho yan, obviously. At dahil hindi pare-pareho, you have no choice but to compute payback period manually. Pero huwag kang mag-alala, ang computation ng manual payback period ay nakabase lang din sa kanyang original definition. Okay, which is, ang goal natin, alamin, ilang taon ang lilipas bago maibalik yung nilabas nating pera, which is 180,000. Pero, ang gagamitin lang nating info ay cash flow after tax lang. Yung salvage value na 20 sa ka 15,000, ignored yon. Gagamitin natin yan mamaya sa bailout period. Okay, so payback period muna tayo. Okay. So, again, ang binubuno nating amount ay 180,000. So, ibig sabihin, pag pumasok yung year 1 na 60,000, obviously, kulang. Pag pumasok yung year 2 na 70,000, kulang pa rin. 130,000 lang yan eh. Pero pag pinasok natin yung buong year 3 na I think 80,000, ay sobra na tayo. Okay? Kasi kapag 60, 70 plus 80, magiging 210,000 na yun. E ang kailangan lang natin, 180. So, ibig sabihin, para makompleto yung 180, ang kailangan lang nating amount for year 3 is 50,000 lang. Kaya naman, kung titignan mo, ang computation ng payback period is 2 years plus 50 over 80. Sir, saan galing yung 50, saka 50 over 80? Kasi hindi mo pwedeng i-assume na ang payback period ay 3 years. Kasi hindi naman natapos ang isang buong taon ng third year para maibalik yung 180. Diba, sabi nga natin, ang kailangan lang natin sa year 3, 50,000 lang. Pero ang pumasok na cash flow ng year 3 is 80. So, kumbaga, inaportion lang natin yung kailangan nating panahon para maibalik yung investment. So, hindi siya full 1 year. Ang kailangan lang natin sa, ikat, sa ikatlong taon is 50 over 80. Kaya naging 2.625 years. So, this would be the answer for payback period. So, ibig sabihin, ito ang manual computation ng payback. Pansinin mo, may, compl may complication ba sa computation? Wala. Bumalik lang tayo sa original definition na kailangan nating ibalik yung 180,000 na net investment. Nagkataon lang sa year 3, hindi buong, hindi buong year 3 ang gagamitin natin. Kasi ang pumasok ay 80, ang kailangan lang natin ay 50,000. Okay? So, kumbaga, ganyan din halos. Hawig dyan ang computation ng bailout period. Pero sa pag-compute ng bailout period, isasama natin ang salvage value. So, punta muna tayo ng year 1. Remember, ang binubuno natin ay 180,000. So, di ba kapag first year at nagko-compute ka ng bailout, according to our template, ang unang papasok ay salvage value ng taon na yon. At ang salvage value ng year 1 ay 20,000. Next, na ipasok natin yung cash flow after tax ng year 1, which is 60,000. At pag pinag-plus mo yan, 80,000 lang, obviously kulang. So, ang gagawin mo na lang, check tayo sa year 1. So, ibig sabihin ng check sa year 1, natapos ang year 1, hindi pa nababalik yung 180,000. 
next. So, ibig sabihin, kung hindi na ibalik ng yung 180,000 ng year 1, ina-assume ng bailout period, try kaya nating ibenta siya ng year 2. Baka sakaling babalik na yung 180,000. Kaya sa year 2, ang unang papasok ulit, yung salvage value ng taon na yon, which is 20,000. Pero bago mo ipasok yung cash flow after tax nung current year, ipasok muna natin yung cash flow after tax nung year 1. At ang cash flow after tax ng year 1 ay 60,000. So kung titignan natin, kulang pa rin yun, ipasok natin yung cash flow after tax nung year 2, which is 70,000. So I think that is... Sa year 2, ang total natin ay 80 plus 70. Hindi ko na siya na total. Pero ang total dapat niyan ay 150,000. So, kung 150,000 yan at ang binubuo ay 180, ibig sabihin natapos ang year 2 na hindi pa nababalik yung 180,000. So, ibig sabihin, proceed tayo ng year 3. Sa year 3, ina-assume ulit, try kaya natin ibenta ng year 3. Malay mo, maibalik na yung 180. So, ang unang papasok ulit, salvage value ng year 3. Next, cash flow after tax ng prior year. Dahil dalawang taon na ang lumilipas, ipagsasama natin yung 60 saka 70,000. So, ang total ay 130. Ito na. Hindi mo pwedeng ipasok yung cash flow after tax ng year 3. Kasi pag pinasok mo lahat yun, so sobra na tayo sa 180. Ang kailangan na lang natin para mabuo yung 180,000 ay 35,000. Kaya ang bailout period natin, kapareho ng kanina, ay 2 years plus 35 over 80. Our bailout period is 2.4375. Just like kanina, you cannot, you cannot completely use year 3 Kasi pag ginamit mo isang buong taon, lalagpas tayo ng 180. Sabi ko nga, ang kailangan lang natin, 35,000 lang. Kaya inaportion ulit natin siya, 35 over 80, plus yung dalawang taon na lumipas, kaya ang total bailout period is 2.4375. Totally no-brainer. Di ba, walang ka-challenge-challenge itong bailout payback sa ARRA. So again, that will conclude our discussion on your non-discounted techniques na walang ka-challenge-challenge, walang kahira-pira. So stay tuned for part 4 and part 4 will be all about will be all about your discounted techniques. So pag-uusapan natin techniques na gumagamit na ng time value of money. So mapapasubo tayo on our next video lecture kasi magkukumpita tayo ng present value factors. Uh, so stay tuned, thank you so much and God bless everyone.